Because I hate videos that ask a simple question but don't answer them, here's the short version. Cyberpunk is about the limitations of humans and how we handle new ideas, advancement and progression. It uses the guise of technology to explore these concepts. If it was only about technology, it would be sci-fi. It's about humans. Hello everyone, welcome to Class Half Dead, and today I'm giving you a beginner's guide to cyberpunk. Of course, I'm getting my cyberpunk video in at just the right time so that I'm too late to get any traffic from accidental clicks thanks to the recently revealed Cyberpunk 2077 gameplay video, and too early for when that game actually releases. When most people think cyberpunk, there are a few staples of the genre that people go to. Visually, they think Blade Runner. Literarily, they think Neuromancer. Blade Runner was 1982, Neuromancer was 1984. Another auspicious date, uh, but not for cyberpunk. Cyberpunk doesn't have to be an authoritarian society, otherwise this would video would like triple in length. Notable cyberpunk anime would be the original Ghost in the Shell, but that was a decade later in 1995. These three are all relatively niche at this point in time, so let's update our reference to The Matrix. Unfortunately showing my age when I say that a 20 year old movie is relatable, I know. But honestly it defined a genre for a generation and has been spoofed to death, riffed off and honestly changed western cinema. It was the sandbank that caused the wave, you know? But those three pieces of media, if you had to boil down their similarities are, essentially, humans and technology not getting along in various ways. Okay, great. Those are cyberpunk. But we still need to know what exactly cyberpunk actually is. It needs to be defined. Cyberpunk is a setting that uses a particular vehicle to explore its theme. Genre here is a bit of a misnomer, and I like to think of it as a theme or setting. Much like I wouldn't call fantasy or sci-fi a genre, even though all booksellers categorically disagree with me there. You could have a fantasy horror or a sci-fi detective noir. In those situations, the setting is a fantasy world that uses the typical tropes of its setting to horrify the reader. Or, the advanced technology in multiple worlds and being stuck in a confined ship setting to show the bitter and damaged nature of the detective. In this case, cyberpunk is a setting. It would be fair to call it a subgenre of sci-fi. It is set at some point in the future. It typically takes place on Earth, but that's by no means a requirement. And the key is that it uses the disparity between humans and robots. Look, cyborgs, androids, automatons, golems, pick a name, it, it really doesn't matter. It's about the difficulties faced by an advancing society. This theme can be used as an analogy for just about anything. Immigration, workers' rights, racism, xenophobia, capitalism, etc, etc. You name it, you can do it. Disparity is the key to conflict, and conflict is all you need for a story. This is also the reason why cyberpunk has become a very marginalised genre since its boom in the 80s and 90s. Because we're living it. And actually, it turns out that we're all totally okay with giving up our autonomy that means things are easier. Isn't that right, Alexa? A quick note on Warhammer 40k and cyberpunk. 40k is in a post-cyberpunk setting, if you will, where humans won that particular war. As anyone familiar with that setting will know that artificial intelligence has been outlawed. Tau, however, are actively using it. They are the cyberpunk race. In the Black Library novel Blades of Damocles, the Tau use a piece of technology that kills their greatest strategic master, Pure Tide. To get his knowledge, the device killed him. They then replicated this knowledge and implanted it into multiple Tau commanders. It didn't work, and these commanders were then left brain dead when the Pure Tide engram chip was removed. This is a perfect story to be telling in a cyberpunk way, if one so wished. It wasn't fully explored and the book had another focus. But that's just a little taste of the 40k setting and how it could be cyberpunk. Tau have the technology, uh, but oddly, Drakari witches have the look for cyberpunk. Slam the two together and you've got yourself a valid cyberpunk setting. Crazy as that is. Also, if you take a look at Necromunda, 
There is a huge amount of cyberpunk influence in the aesthetic, but thematically it's not cyberpunk. Personally, I feel that House Escher are straight out of a cyberpunk fever dream. Also, a new kill team idea, a mix of Drakari Witches, Imperial Guard and Tau. Not sure what I'd play them counting as, but they look awesome. Anyway, I hope this has been a vaguely useful beginner's guide to cyberpunk, and a little bit of 40k there, and honestly, this was very much a beginner's guide, and there's a huge amount to say on the genre across all different media formats, from film to books to comic. And of course, I linked it to 40k, because that's where my channel is currently focused, but I'm not always going to do that. This has been a little dive into what Glass Half Dead is interested to right now, and expect more cyberpunk content from me, as I'm very excited for Cyberpunk 2077. And actually, my next book is going to be a cyberpunk book, exploring the themes of technology interacting with humans, living life in virtual reality, is the physical reality required, and so on and so forth. Hope this has been interesting, guys. Glass Half Dead, signing out. Have a great day.